One, two, three. One, two, three. Testing. Tim, what do you think? Our mayor, what do you think of Tim's look? Very distinguished, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. See, he, he's not laughing like some of these women around here were doing, so <laughs> they were laughing. There, hello, hello. Test one, two. She can't talk. Hello? Hi, how are you? I have a big echo. Well, if we well, turn, if turn our mics on. Tim, you have to make an appearance now. <laughs> the flash bomb. <laughs> yeah, Beth, he, he promises he'll keep it just for you. <laughs> so when we go back to the house in the building. Tim and I have a long history here. <laughs> Got a corn. And Councilor Max, I think, was. Max was there. And there five o'clock. So, yeah. Jerry was. They got there. four. Okay. <laughs> then I think we'll take off. Good evening. Good afternoon, I should say. Well, it's both. Uh, welcome to a City Council workshop meeting. Um, today is May 20th, 2020. It is 5 p.m. I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order uh, before I introduce our new city clerk. I'd like to uh, say welcome to all of you out there uh, watching. Welcome to city council. And I'd like to do a roll call, please, at this time. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Munns, can you hear us? Yes, I hear. I can hear everyone clearly. Great. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Servadius. Present. Councillor Mack. Present. And Councillor Wiesner. Present. And I don't see any other councillors at this time. So if they join, I'll try to, to, try to uh, introduce them at that time. I'd like to uh, give a uh, grand welcome and introduction to our new city clerk, Julie Lindsay. 
Um, she's been uh, working here, uh, uh, learning uh, how we do business at the city of Ant at the city of Oak Harbor. She came to us uh, uh, from the port, <coughs> port district in in Anacortes, so she knows something about public meetings and uh, certainly uh, has hit the ground running. She knows uh, quite a bit about our processes already. So, welcome, Julie. It's a pleasure, and uh, uh, it's very nice to have you. Um, bittersweet in the fact that we're losing our Carla uh, to another state and a new chapter in her life, but uh, we'll, we'll wish her a, a farewell, I think, in the next day or two. Is Friday your last day, or is it tomorrow? Friday, okay. Well, it's been wonderful uh, having you, and uh, we appreciate your many hard-working days and all your efforts. Thank you very much. So, Council, we're still okay. Um, I'd like to just start off with our development services, item number A. Central Business District Zoning Code Amendment status, and I guess we'll just we'll introduce let staff introduce themselves as we uh, as you uh, share this agenda. So, if I believe we have our uh, inter interim uh, uh, director down near CAC Kamak with us, CAC. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor uh, CAC Kamak, interim director for development services. Um, we're here to just uh, uh, to present the um, the CBD uh, code um, uh, review that we're doing along with the moratorium. Actually, not the review, but the actual moratorium and its timeline. Um, I have Associate Planner Ray Lindenberg here uh, with us, so he's going to head um, that presentation. So I'm just going to transfer it over to Ray. Ray, take it away. Thank you, CAC, and uh, members of the City Council and the Mayor. Um, I am going to talk to you for a few minutes, uh, not too long, just about uh, the uh, status and the scheduling for our future uh, work on this uh, CBD, CBD code review and the moratorium that's involved with it. Um, we have been working still behind the scenes, even though uh, we haven't had a presentation to you uh, recently because of the obvious uh, shutdown issues. Um, but what we are looking at here is um, just the, uh, the possibility or the probability that we'll need to extend the moratorium for a short period of time to allow for um, the, the work to continue and the uh, public involvement, most of all, to, to occur. Um, previously, uh, you know that uh, the uh, moratorium was approved in August of 2019. It was August 28th. Um, there was a six-month extension approved uh, in February, and I, don't, I honestly don't know why I said that it was approved in March, but it was approved in February. That puts you to a deadline uh, to have this uh, completed by August 28th of this year. Um, I don't think that that's going to happen at this point because we do want to have that, uh, that citizen involvement, that public input that is so important. Um, just from the standpoint of getting the information from folks and also from the standpoint of meeting uh, state requirements as well and our own requirements uh, for adoption of uh, new ordinances. So what we're looking at is we have, and I, I didn't attach it uh, to the packet, but I will show it on the, the screen here, the work plan uh, that we uh, had from the last uh, uh, approval of the extension of the moratorium. And so what we have was at that time, we were looking at a March 2020 to work on uh, information uh, compilation and then the public outreach survey, which we did complete. We have the, the uh, survey is still uh, live on, a, on SurveyMonkey and we're still collecting information. Um, I am looking at other ways to collect information as well, talking about the, the possibility of doing some uh, other outreach uh, through our uh, social media uh, channels and things like that. Um, we're looking at uh, doing a draft presentation for Planning Commission in April, um, moving on to May uh, to present to the Planning Commission and recommendation to the City Council, um, presentation of a draft ordinance with the City Council in June and adoption possibly in July or August. And we did build in a little bit of uh, extra time there with that to allow for any kind of hiccups that may happen. But at this point, we're about two months behind because of the shutdown. Um, I think as about everything is when we're dealing with uh, the uh, you know public input and things like that. 
So what I'm looking at is uh, just the, like I said, the concept that we may need to extend the moratorium. Um, I'm also going to throw up on the screen here uh, the RCW that talks about moratorium. And as you can see there, I have it highlighted. This can be extended beyond uh, the uh, typical one, one uh, six-month period if we have a public hearing and findings of fact are made prior to each renewal. I think we can pretty easily um, say that uh, the, the circumstances created by the, the shutdown and the, the COVID virus uh, are a reasonable uh, reason to uh, extend this slightly. And I don't anticipate that there would be any reason that we, we would need to go for the full six months. We just need that extra, that extra time period to um, allow for the process to occur as far as the public, uh, public input. Um, we're talking about doing an open house, and I'd still like to do that, but I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, it might have to be some sort of virtual public open house, whether it's on Facebook or uh, through uh, some sort of Zoom meeting or something along those lines, and we're still working that out, but uh, we'll have some, some plan for that shortly. Um, if we do need to do an extension, we will come back to you uh, with the uh, revised uh, uh, work plan to show the uh, anticipated completion date as is required in this RCW. So if you do have any questions or anything, I am available for that. And I just wanted to kind of update everybody on what the schedule looks like and what we're doing. We are still working here, um, but uh, it's just been difficult without being able to get that public input. Okay, uh, questions for Ray, I see Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Um, because the rules are always changing, but if we had like use of the Elks. I don't know how expensive it is. I think usually they've been pretty generous for us to um, use their building, but kind of like the grocery stores, you allow so many in and um, let them wander around and give comments and see things and then let another group come in. We can publicize that and say how many and, and this and that, but um, people do vet better if they or in a sense in person and they can see and someone is there to answer questions. And I don't think, you know, if you limit it to, if, if it's still 50 at that time, that's a surely a big enough hall to have it in. Um, I don't think we would have 300 people show up, but um, I can't see doing this without having some type of public impact and easily we're gonna lose six months possibly of timing to get this done. So I, I would be much in favor of continuing the moratorium, but maybe looking at that as the rules change, but um, it's been most beneficial, like when we were planning the park and different things like that changes to have things like that. So my opinion. Councilor Wiesner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Lindbergh, uh, have we, do we have any applications pending or has there been any pre-apps or talk of any pre-apps of projects into downtown that have not been allowed to go forward due to the, 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 the current restrictions we've got in place? Um, we would process all pre-apps because it's not a full application, you know, to actually get permits. Um, we do have a pre-app uh, in right now for the, uh, the empty lot that's at the corner of Dock and Pioneer Way. Um, I'm not sure what the schedule is for the applicant on that as far as you know, providing a, a full application. However, it is my understanding that the moratorium um, has a, a certain cutoff level with regard to um, percentages of, of commercial and, and residential space. And it is my understanding that that application would meet that cutoff and would not be stopped by the moratorium. Um, other than that, we have not had any uh, pre-ops or applications or even as far as I know, um, serious phone calls. Um, I, I have talked to a few people about the, uh, the property that's right there at the corner of Midway and Bayshore and Pioneer, um, but nothing serious that was going to come in for an application. Okay, please, please do your best to keep us informed if such an application would come in, please, during, during this time. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Anyone else uh, for questions? Okay, seeing none, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Um, we'll move on to item number B, Island County Interlocal Agreement 
Hoffman Trail. Is it, does that go back to you, CAC? Yes, it's a, I'll take this one, Mayor. Thank you. Um, so this is a uh, interagency agreement between City of Oak Harbor and Island County for a, pro for a trail project, and I'm just going to uh, share my screen so I can uh, you can see the the map associated. So this trail, um, the scope of this trail extends from um, the Hoffman Road on the north end of town uh, all the way to uh, Mid uh, to Midway Boulevard and Goldie Road. And so you can see uh, where the city limits are, and actually the city limits jump uh, over to the right side of Highway 20 uh, at some point in this uh, in this vicinity. So the trail is uh, half in the county and half in the city, uh, a great uh, uh, partnership project. And so the city applied, uh, along with the county, uh, partnered to apply for a grant, and some grant money was a uh, awarded about a million or so dollars uh, from the RTPO. And um, the RTPO requires that uh, there be a 13.5% match. And so this was a couple years ago, and um, we uh, uh, scheduled this project in our capital improvements plan based on uh, the fact that we did get the grant and have our match. So this is the uh, the project currently in our capital improvements plan, and we have about $28,000 already in our plan uh, for that project. And at the time of scheduling this, which was a couple of years ago, uh, it was anticipated that this project could be, uh, some initial work will be done in 2020, and there could potentially be a gap before that project picks back up again. However, as we got into this project discussion last year and into this year, we found that there's a lot of work that's going to be done in 2020 and 2021. Um, so uh, we'll have to do some sort of a, 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 an amendment to try and move some dollars ahead to try and um, do some work um, in the earlier part of uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, so the agreement covers uh, about 50,000 from each jurisdiction. It's a, just to get our engineering um, uh, started for the project. And the reason why we want to bring it right now to you is um, this, any work done on this project, any information that we can do engineering or soils work or any of that information will greatly help us in moving the Navy project forward. So the Navy has a project along Highway 20, a cleanup project that they want to do uh, from their site over here that they want to do uh, along Highway 20. And so uh, in order to help that project move forward, uh, it will be helpful if we have some information. And that's why we kind of have it right now uh, moving um, um, during these uh, times. It's, you can consider it almost essential primarily because of that Navy component. So. This is just the engineering work to get us started. We have money budgeted for it, for the project. We'll have to do some budget amendments to move some money. Uh, but that's kind of the scope of the agreement. So, um, and I will return back and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions related to that. Okay, uh, Councilor Servadius. Did we lose our I don't know if anyone else has the ability to raise a hand. I don't. Um, so I just wave. Thank you, Mayor. Um, CAC, remind me, you've probably told us before, but I'm not recalling the specifics, the Navy project. Give me more details on that and how this benefits them. We want to be good neighbors, but I'm, I don't recall what we're doing there or what they're doing. Um, I will. I will, uh, it's, a, it's about a cleanup project, and our city engineer, Jim, has got his hand up, and he knows a lot more about this project than I do, so I'll hand it over to him. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so uh, the Navy approached us uh, mid last year about um, uh, using the corridor, the SR-20 corridor, to install um, uh, approximately four wells that will extract the uh, contaminated groundwater out, uh, and that material will be pumped back onto a treatment uh, facility that they're building on the old landfill site. Um, <clears throat> you know, it kind of 
put us in a rush for this project, as Cac said. Uh, we weren't quite as uh, far along with uh, our discussions, our designs, or even our concepts as they were. Um, and essentially, these two these two projects, the Navy's project is going to go nearly directly underground in the same location as our pathway. Um, uh, we are working with the Navy. Um, I'm expected to, um, I'm waiting for them to send me a draft letter. Essentially, they're at requesting that the city uh, allow them to um, uh, uh, use the, an easement on SR20 that WashDOT is more than willing to grant. Uh, we are the uh, 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 part of the granting authority of that, so we have to write a letter saying, yes, we can, we can uh, uh, grant that use. Uh, and they are uh, busily working on plans as we speak to get their work done. So they're going to be in the ground ahead of us. We, uh, we certainly aren't willing to, to start constructing and have them tear it out. So that's where we're at and that's what's going on in that project, so. Are there any financial considerations for them doing that work for us? Uh, no, no, they, they've made it clear that their funding, uh, their federal EPA uh, Superfund uh, type funding can only pay for their extraction system and no, no, no uh, additional pathway on top of that for maintenance access vehicles. And that's kind of been some of our hang up uh, with them is is we see this as a as a combined use pathway. We certainly think they're going to use vehicles to access their wells. They're saying that they'll all be accessed by hand and, and maintained by hand. And you know, my experience, experience my staff, we don't think that's that's quite right. But that's what they're saying. And so they they're doing their best they can to move it out of the out of the pathway. Their structures out of the pathway and their pipe system out of the pathway. It'll be just off the pathway. But um, uh, so we're going to build our structure to the uh, you know to to meet our standard. Um, and we're going to have to have some language that if, you know, if they access our pathway with vehicles and it damages it, then we're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to repair it. So, but that's where we're at. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Um, whoever, the Navy obviously will do some grading, which may or may not kind of help our project. And I would imagine they're on a time limit. Do we know what their time limit is usually when uh, they're using federal funds to do super cleanup kind of things? They have uh, very strict rules, but I like the idea, Jim, that if they damage our path, they've got to fix it. Um, right. Go ahead. Right. And the, and the time that they've explained to me is um, uh, as soon as they get the letter, they're supposed to be sending me a draft uh, of, of a letter they typically use uh, so that I can make some edits to it. Send me that letter. I can I can sign that um, and get them moving forward on it. Um, the uh, uh, the actual construction I believe is going to start sometime. I believe they're saying in late July or September, somewhere in that neighborhood. And and it's not going to take very long. They're telling us that their grading is minimal. Essentially, they're going to uh, uh, dig a trench and lay their pipe in the ground and not disturb the the, the top surface of the ground other than the trench. So they're not going to grade a pathway through there for us or for their own use. Councillor Mack. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Jim, I have a question for clarification. Just whose property easement is this path on? Is it on state highway or is this on Navy property? No, it, it is on uh, state highway, but uh, per the RCWs uh, and the size of our city, we have authority um, to allow access um, into the right of way. That authority is given to us by WashDOT and um, <clears throat> Um, in this particular instance, because of the impact, uh, we've we've said, okay, washed out. You've got to you've got to step up and help us do this because we're not just going to give a blanket authority for for a piece of pipe going in the ground that's going to be there for 50 to 70 years. Uh, typically, in a, a situation like this, we would require a franchise agreement, right, with the power company or the gas company. The Navy does not enter franchise agreements, so they're requesting an easement, um, which is you know a right to the property. Uh, and so we had to have WashDOT's authority to grant that easement. Um, and uh, uh, the Navy and WashDOT and the, the assistant AG that's assigned to WashDOT have agreed that the best thing to do is, is to, to authorize the city to enter in this agreement uh, and stand back and let the Navy accomplish their, their uh, obviously necessary cleanup of the site. So. so second part of that is with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Munns. Once this is all said and done and, and uh, uh, paved over or whatever we do, um, and they come in and they need to uh, redo something, uh, are they responsible or re-responsible for our pathway? 
or the trails? <laughs> that's a good question, and, and that's you know that's where we're going to you know uh, 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 write in our letter very specific language that um, uh, if they do get in there, the likelihood that there is damage that they would be responsible for it. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. This question might be best for Kathy because she has a lot of history. Um, when we did the fuel line, when they were trying to, the barge comes into the exchange side and they had to get an easement from us instead of going through all the property owners because they were all saying, well, it's a million dollars if you're gonna put a pipe through my thing. How did, do you remember how we worked that out? I mean, it seemed to be a win-win for both, but yeah, there's a fuel line that goes in on our easement property from around Torpedo out there. I know it took some legal stuff to do. Um, I wasn't involved in uh, working out those details. That was actually Steve Powers. And I think the difference between that project and this project is there was just a crossing of the highway, not um, taking an easement along the highway. So um, I think in terms of Washtag, it was a little bit easier because it was just, you know, one small area where they crossed SR-20. In this case, it is going along the highway uh, with that pipe there. I know there was, con there was concern what happens if um, at some point in the future we need to have the highway widened there and those kinds of things. And I think Jim can speak more to that, but um, I really don't have a lot of background in history, unfortunately, on that pipe, the fuel line. Fuel line? Well, I know that it was a lot, it was more affordable and uh, legally easier to do working with just us than trying to do, I don't know if there was eight different property owners or something, but it was very important for them to get a new fuel line uh, to come across from one base to the other. So. I just thought we might be able to look back at that and see what was written to maybe help us out. I don't know. And and we're using that easement uh, as the basis for this easement as well. Um, and Kathy's right; it was a crossing of the highway. Um, the <clears throat> in this situation, because it runs alongside the highway and there's a finite amount of space, um, you know, if there's a widening. Um, let's say they get their their pipe system in, and we get our our, our pathway in. If there's a widening. You know, WashDOT and Federal Highways is a very specific criteria for how how far a pedestrian pathway can be from a state highway, and so that's where our concern lies. Uh, so we've pushed everything as far to the west as we can uh, along those property lines. Uh, certainly, the I believe the Navy tried to to gain access through private property um, and not be in the right of way, but this was the the uh, you know the easier route for them, if you will, to to try to get it through WashDOT versus going through individual. Uh, property negotiations. Okay. Any other questions? Input? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we will move on to our next item, Public Works Staff Reorganization Plan. And I think our Public Works Director, Kathy Rosen, is going to maybe present that along with Jim or by yourself. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Jim's going to share his screen. I'm going to do most of the talking, but there uh, there is a portion where Jim is going to um, talk about um, some ideas we have for uh, engineering as we move into the budget process. Okay, so next slide. So this is what the structure looked like at the beginning of 2020. And on the um, left-hand side, you see operations manager retired in February 2020. That was Rich Tiehouse. Rich Tiehouse uh, uh, was the operations manager over facilities, um, streets division, and water division. And so our stage one, um, restructure is going to focus on filling the gaps that were left uh, when Rich retired. And then our stage two is what, uh, is what we're gonna move towards um, presenting more in depth when we get to the budget process. 
So uh, Rich retired in February and we have some gaps to fill in facilities, storm, uh, facility streets and water. So next slide. So right now, um, water and streets are reporting to me. We don't have that operations manager um, in the organiza organization chart right now. Um, and we're not planning to replace that position. Uh, we have moved facilities over um, under Sandra Place Central, and we're calling it Central Services Division. So it's now facilities, um, purchasing, and equipment rental, the mechanics. Um, and that's where it stands right now. If you, and we'll go in depth into each division. So you wanna go to the next slide. So here is the Central Services Supervisor. Um, that position uh, used to be central purchasing and budget coordinator. Um, that has been reclassified and we're showing now that the mechanics are under it as well as facilities. Any questions on, oops, what happened? Thank you, that's easier to see. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, this is water, the water division and how we have it structured um, on an interim basis. And this is the, the structure that we would like to get to with the exception of um, who water reports to, which will come in the budget discussion. So um, we have an interim water supervisor, uh, that position, the water supervisor, has a lot of uh, responsibility and personal liability. So Rich used to be our water manager um, as reported to Washington State Department of Health. So we have to have somebody designated uh, as our water manager. We have an interim person filling that role. Um, and when I talk about liability, if there was something to happen, um, that person could actually go to jail. So there is a lot of responsibility and personal liability associated with that position. Um, then we would have a lead, uh, which we are, you know, our current structure includes a lead, the lead reported to Rich. Now we would have the lead report to the water supervisor. Um, we have one vacancy, it was recently vacated we need to fill that position, but we also have one water position that has been authorized, but unbudgeted for several years now. That means we have just not filled that um, authorized position and we've carried that vacancy. Um, any questions on this yet? Okay, next slide, Jim. Oops, wait, I, yep. uh, Mayor Pro Tem has a question, I think. Sorry, Ms. Rosen. That's okay. Uh, so basically we could have five people as different water specialists, which would be dividing the chores or the jobs so that yes. they could have the certification or training or whatever that they need. So right now is someone kind of uh, cross trained to do the position that has not filled or we're not to that point where we need to have that fifth person. We don't need to have that fifth person right now. We've ha we've carried that vacancy for a long time. The one that was recently vacated, we do need to fill that. So we will we need to have those four um, yellowish boxes as water specialists. Okay. But we don't need the gray one right now. We okay. don't anticipate filling that. Um, uh, within the next couple of years. We've, um, we've had lots of efficiencies and um, so we've been able to keep that vacant. So you are looking to our a very specialized person to fill the recent vacancy um, with um, some sort of training. It isn't just like someone can come in and they could be trained for everything. They have to have something in their background and then further training you guys would do or make sure that they are. So the, the water specialist vacancy in the lower right on the chart 
that we will take someone who has um, no background in water and we can train them. The, the water supervisor position, uh, which is reporting to the public works director right now, that position requires a minimum of four years of working in the field to even be able to test for that water distribution manager uh, at a level that could take on the responsibilities for the city of Oak Harbor with the State Department of Health. So um, we, we do take people who don't have experience as water specialist ones and we train them, we send them to school, they have to test for their different certifications and they have to have so much time working in the field before they can take certain levels of certification tests. Um, the interim or the, the water supervisor has to have a minimum of four years of experience in the field to even test for that position. Okay, so basically that fifth spot then enlists as long as we don't add 200,000 people tomorrow, we're okay with still leaving it vacant and people can move up the ladder as yes. they get into this field and stuff. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. That, that clears up a lot. I appreciate that very much. Okay. Next slide. Any other questions on this one? Okay. So now we're looking at um, the streets division. Uh, and f again, filling those gaps that were left when Rich Tie House Operations Manager retired. Uh, so right now we have an interim street supervisor slash lead. We're still working out what the title for that position is going to be. Um, and, inter and then uh, an interim street specialist free, again, working out the titles. But basically, the um, supervisor slash lead will take on a lot of the responsibilities that Rich had. And then the interim street specialist three would take on some of those responsibilities that were originally filled by the lead. Um, we have, uh, that leaves two street specialist positions. These would be internal promotions. And we are not looking to backfill with um, filling these two currently vacant positions right now in our stage one. So um, one of those goes back past 2010 and one uh, was um, eliminated in 2011 due, due to the recession. We had a vacant, uh, we had a, an employee leave and we just never filled it because of the recession. So our, the stage one, our current reorganization, we're trying to fill the gaps left by the retirement of the operations manager. Um, the salary for that operations manager position was $111,756. Uh, that position was charged out one third to facilities, one third to water and one third to streets. Um, the salary changes in the central services division, which now includes facilities, don't exceed uh, $5,000 a year. The salary changes as we're, as we're proposing in water will not exceed $5,000 per year and the salary changes in streets won't exceed $5,000 a year. So that's gonna result in a net savings of about $32,000 in each of those three divisions. Any questions? All right, so stage two, this is, this is a bigger reorganization plan, and this is something that uh, we will be presenting um, during budget discussions for 21-22. And so this is a work in progress. What ends up coming before you at budget will be vetted between finance and administration, and so it may be different than what you're seeing tonight. But we wanted to share with you what what our thoughts are um, and take any input regarding this now. So the first thing we'd like to do is create an assistant director of public works slash city engineer position and then create an assistant city engineer position. Uh, we want to change the reporting structure for water and streets. You remember right now they're reporting to me if we create this assistant director 
uh, city engineer position, those two divisions would report to the assistant director. We would like to reclassify one water specialist position to a water quality specialist to better align with the work that is actually being performed. Um, we have a lot of cross connection and um, of other regulatory requirements that are associated with water quality. And so we have, we have um, quite a bit of time being spent on that uh, task. So we, we really need to align the job title and, and pay with the work that's actually being performed. We would like to fill one of those two street, street specialist positions um, to bring us back to the staffing level that we had in 2010. And we know that our workload is gonna be increasing significantly with the preparation work for all of the TVD streets uh, that will be overlaid or chip sealed in the future. We'd like to bring development review in house. It's currently contracted out. Um, and the way we've been doing that is we have a vacancy um, project manager position. We have a vacant project manager position. We've taken the funds that would have been spent on salary and benefits for that position and put them in our professional services line um, so, so that we can pay a consultant or a contract engineer to do the development review for us. That's John Semerow. So when we would, if we bring that in house, we would fill that vacancy and take the money back out of professional services and put it into salaries and benefits. Um, and then we'd like to create a GIS permitting tech position. Um, if I could go back though to the development uh, review engineer in house, um, this is something that we're gonna, we're gonna have to look at um, very closely over the next several months because if development were to slow down because of uh, the, economy, the downturn in the economy or if developments are put on hold, it may make more sense to continue to contract that service out because then we're only paying for the hours that are actually spent reviewing plans. Um, if we bring that in-house, then we have an employee salary and benefits uh, that we're paying throughout the year. There is no, uh, you know, just we're only going to pay you for the work you perform on these development plans when they come in. So um, I think it's prudent to kind of watch what's happening in the economy and work through this um, with finance and administration during the budget process. Jim, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. And, you know, and just to, to, to add on to what Kathy said, so currently right now, um, and, and Kak, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's approximately you know, 500 plus uh, housing units that are in development and review. Um, we are in the process of finalizing approximately 270 of those. I would say probably by the end of summer, they will be permitted. Um, what happens after that, if the economy slows down, um, I certainly don't have a crystal ball, but it, it it, it may be wise to, you know, not fill that position. Uh, and we certainly wouldn't be able to fill it th this budget cycle anyway. We would continue to use John Simrow, so. Okay, we have a question from Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the staff as a whole, when someone starts the permitting process, I remember there was gonna be a development downtown the central business district and the bottom floor was all retail and up above it, they were gonna have some high priced condos with a parking garage that went with it. And basically they were taking up a huge hunk from um, at that time, Sharps Cove, which is now Alfie's over. And I think they had five years and they were in the midst of planning and then all of a sudden the stock market and everything just sort of collapsed. And so they ended up losing their money. And so they had five years to rekindle it and then they didn't because it just wasn't there. That would be possibly the same scenario with the housing market. I would assume that's in the works right now. Yes. 
Okay, is um, has Seminole, I may have said it wrong, been really efficient? Are you happy with them or should we look for someone else? I know he's convenient, he's just what, an anacortis, but it, it seems like we're always at the very end or just over our deadline in trying to get these permits back to people. I know that there is some money that they still have and they, I mean, to them, time is money. So is there, uh, are, is everything working out in a timely fashion or is there any way to get through what our staff has to do to get it back to them as long as they still have the money and they're willing to invest? I guess I'm trying to figure out, you want all the checks and the balances, but um, sometimes it seems like we're right on the edge of the deadline or just over it to get it back to them, which means there's no work being done, but they do have them. I'm trying to figure out a balance. Do you see where I'm coming from, Jim, between <clears throat> trying to get the project going while they have the money and get it going, and then there's a point where all the investors just go, that's it, too long, we're not gonna do it, and they just pull out. So, I, I, I you know, if Simra is doing a good job, but maybe you feel like someone else could do better or something, I don't know. Um, Hopefully we'll have in-house and then you have more control over it. So I'm just trying to also add that into it, which I'm sure you all have, have done. Right, and, and to, to answer your question, uh, John does an excellent job for us. Um, uh, he's very uh, adept at interpreting our code. Uh, we have some very specific you know, development uh, functions that uh, some of the consultants that, that you know, we were brought on board by the, the developer. Um, you know, that they at the beginning they, they, they struggled to meet. Uh, you know, we're we're past that stage now. We're actually in the in the civil plan review uh, stage, and um, and so what we're seeing here in the last uh, uh, I would say probably the last six weeks to eight weeks is um, <clears throat> all these projects have caught up with each with each, with each one, right? And so. They're, they're, they're slammed on top of each other. And <clears throat> so as one gets, uh, uh, you know, commented on and near, and, and we return those comments, you know, John, you know, he, he'll work on the next one. Well, we'll, we'll get new comments back immediately w within two days from that previous one. Um, and so it, it just keeps stacking and stacking and stacking because everybody wants to get their project out the door. You know, I pushed John as hard as he can go. Uh, he certainly responded, um, you know, not to not to make any excuses. The you know the, the COVID uh, crisis uh, that certainly impacted his his workload. Um, he had to get a bunch of of, of, of non quote unquote non essential work out of the way that was scheduled in his office for his personal business. He chose to move that forward, and then at the same time, right as he got that accomplished, he had some hardware malfunctions and some server crashes, and he had to get that system rebuilt. Uh, and he's just now recovering from that, but. Um, we are on track right now with all of our, our uh, 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 projects. Um, uh, we have three projects that uh, are that should be able to be permitted um, uh, after next week. Uh, the Howard's Point had a mi few minor comments. Those comments are, 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 are were addressed. Uh, we're reviewing those, and, and that should be completed by Tuesday. Um, the Scenic Heights. Uh, 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 hillside development. Uh, that one again had a few minor comments on it. That's due uh, on Friday next week, and uh, McDonald's is due on Friday as well next week. So uh, we're on track to meet all those and and get those projects, uh, you know, permitted. Thank you very much. I appreciate right. it. You're welcome. If, if yeah. I can um, add to that, um, this is Cat Mac, uh, interim director. Uh, the, de the development services, uh, uh, the development review starts uh, at development services department. So, um, you know, we play a big role in how projects are tracked and move uh, within the within the city. And um, as interim director, um, being in this uh, position for about four weeks, maybe now or five weeks, I am finding out a lot about our process and learning about it. And I'd like to have a discussion with the city council on uh, our development review process and maybe even um, combine it with some of what Public Works um, is uh, recommending and, and suggesting here. 
but development review um, needs to be looked at um, and can be um, streamlined and efficient. It needs resources. It needs to be reviewed and renewed, I should say. Uh, but as Jim mentioned, um, we are doing the best we can for the changing times. We have switched to electronic review. It's not easy to do. Uh, going from paper to electronic, there's a lot of workflow things that have to change. And we are discovering things as we go. But we are doing the best. John is doing a fabulous job of trying his best to respond uh, to all the comments uh, that are coming. And uh, just to a comment on, we don't know what the economy is going to do. Um, and so we'll have to just uh, uh, kind of uh, see as we get numbers and evolve uh, with what's coming. Uh, but I don't want to uh, hijack this conversation into uh, into being about development review, but it's definitely a component uh, that I think needs further discussion and further refinement. Um, and so we're working on our side uh, with Steve's departure as well to try and look at um, what things are happening uh, from development services and see what the workflow is and what are the tools and positions that we need to look at in order to provide the a seamless service. So there's some work going on on our side as well. Uh, just it's not anywhere close to what uh, Public Works has, but we have to work with them uh, to figure it out. And I agree with you, CAC. Um, we're just going to have to look at things differently. And the shortfalls we have in technology or lack of fiber going to all the departments that need to go there and stuff, we just need to rethink and we can't slow down trying to get that done because people are gonna to have to work differently. And this may not be, I'm sorry to say, I don't wanna be a you know doomsday, the only pandemic. I mean, um, things just happen, but it really has hit us in the face how ill prepared we were to be sure that staff has a way to work from home, that uh, Ring Central has been a godsend, that we got that on board um, to have, Um, I'm just um, hoping that we'll work as we can. A little hard to say this is where we're deficient. This is where we need to put some resources so that we can get through things um, more efficient, uh, streamlined, but also faster. So uh, thank you very much for everyone's time. I, I appreciate hearing an explanation um, on what's been happening. Thank you. Councilor Mack. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, Kat Mac, thank you uh, for your input there. I appreciate you jumping in uh, with Jim. Um, question or comment, I should say, is um, definitely interested in sitting down to a round table. I understand, uh, uh, as uh, Mayor Pro Tem put it, we are being somewhat blindsided, but time is money, and uh, we, the city of Oak Harbor, have to be diligent and move forward and uh, sometimes we have to work overtime and pick up the slack. And so I appreciate you uh, and being the interim coming up with any and all solutions. And uh, if you need help from the council, please let us know in reaching out. And um, uh, again, uh, thank you very much. And for Jim, I do have a, a question. Uh, uh, thank you for dealing with all of this. Uh, it's an extra load. I suspected that things were sort of piling up, but let's weed through them and get them out there. So question on this stage two thing, correct me if I'm wrong, but am I looking at four new positions or are we only bringing in, moving some things around and bringing in more? So I'm not quite sure just how many new staff we're looking at here. I count four. Well, um, let's go through the details of each of these. We have org charts that show exactly what we're doing. So um, maybe that would answer your questions if we move forward and, and you know, please bring them. If I'm not answering your questions, ask again. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kat. Go We've got okay. one, one other question, I think now. Councilor Cervadius. Thank you, Mayor. I found my icons, they moved on me. Um, Jim, real quick, but, and then we can continue with the rest of this presentation because I know I'll have a couple more questions. You made the statement, I may have misheard you, but I think you said we've 
she said we've got a lot of these permits and we should have them ready by the end of summer was that a correct did i hear you say that correctly and then you followed that up by saying the scenic heights hillside project i think that we have two different projects i don't know exactly what they're called there's one on scenic heights and there is one on the hillside above walmart your statement was we should have the scenic heights hillside permit by the end of next week so could you clarify those two things for the big projects that are rolling where are we at as far as are the expecting permits by the end of summer and then scenic heights versus hillside can you verify where we're at with those yeah, so, so the, the hillside gets confusing. So there's the hillside center, which is scenic heights, uh, and then there's the hillside PRD, which is the big site on uh, uh, Erie and SR20 and, and Barrington near Walmart. Um, so we've gone through the civil reviews of, of Howard's Point and, and uh, uh, the hillside center development, which is scenic heights, uh, and McDonald's. Um, <clears throat> they have, you know, they had comments. They have addressed those comments. Uh, we reviewed those again, and we're in that final stage of the review to where we can actually is issue the construction permits to move forward. The um, uh, and those comments are all due by, or our review is, to, is due to be completed by by Friday. Now, in in CAC's department, the plan, in uh, uh, development services, uh, they typically send those comments back out to the to the developer on the following Tuesday. Um, uh, so that's why I'm saying the following week we'll have those 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 permitted. Um, it, it, what typically happens is there may be one small minor thing and we'll, we'll say approved as noted and they have to, you know, allows them to get the permit and move forward. Um, uh, but they still have to address that one thing that may be missing. Um, and they, they so they, you know, they, they can do X, Y, and, and Z, but because they didn't, you know, A wasn't submitted, we give them time to, to, to prepare and submit A and get that approved. They just can't construct that portion. Uh, so we, that's how we, we typically get them moving out the door with these one these minor remaining issues. Um, the Hillside PRD, which is the large project, that is currently in review for uh, clearing and grading. Um, and there's some discussion on that right now. I've been talking with the developer and their engineer uh, as well as as well as John on that project. That um, uh, <clears throat> so what happens in that that project is we know is very large. Uh, it's a number of acres, um, but when they want to start, and this this goes for uh, for Mar uh, Mar uh, Marin Woods as well. So <clears throat> they, they they come up with a large plan of development, and then they start breaking it apart for phases. Um, and so we can either review the whole development at one time, or we can review individual phases at one time. Uh, with respect to the hillside PRD, uh, they dropped the whole thing on us, and so we're reviewing a 180 acre 180 lot plat. But they're only looking to build, you know, a, a small fraction of the homes towards the lower end uh, along uh, SR20, and so that that our questions in this review were basically addressing the whole picture. When and I spoke to the to the developer this morning about this, if they could narrow that scope to where we're only looking at that small piece, that we could turn it around a lot faster, uh, because we're not looking at a big system; we're looking at a small system, um, uh, and so <clears throat> that one. Um, they've got their comments back today now that falls back in the in the queue and so any development that that is currently ahead of them you know they stay behind unless the the the, the development we reach says oh this is not good we're not going to continue to review it and kick that back to the developer and then a, a, a project can move forward um marin woods the same way uh, they, they've dropped, you know, 48 lots on us, and, you know, we're reviewing the, the civil plans, uh, well, the grading plans, and now they're coming back saying they, they may want to use our model home ordinance, which is eight homes at a time. But again, we're reviewing an entire plat um, and, and set of plans uh, where we're, you know, if we can get them to focus on what they want to build today and, and get them through that process, that allows their, their engineers to continue, continue to work on other aspects that, that aren't impacted with the, the current phase they're trying to see. But right now we're trying to, to work on all this at one time, all these developments in whole at one time, instead of looking at the smaller phases, which is typically how they're gonna build these developments. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you for the clarification. I guess I'll just end with this, two things. I think it was council member Mack that said time is money. 
you know, for some of these folks, if they're serious when they're looking at grading permits, it's obviously there's a weather window there that this makes sense, which might be very different from, I don't know what McDonald's wants to do. If they're building a new McDonald's or remodeling, that's not as weather dependent possibly. So I don't know how we triage this, but uh, Mr. Kamak, as we look at always going through our processes and improving in development services and public works engineering, you know, if there's a way to triage, especially in this time of economic uh, uncertainty, uh, those projects that are really more shovel ready, and it's not, I'm not talking about any one project in favoritism, but if they're, if we think they're closer to shovel ready, if there's a way to, you know, throw some extra dollars at development review, if that's what we need to do, let's do that, rather than have them miss a weather window. And, you know, all of this work that be, could be coming to Oak Harbor and tradesmen that could be, get, you know, getting a lot of work being you know reset another nine to 12 months so i'll end with that thank you okay so before we move forward jim i think there's been a request if you could make it full screen it might make it easier for everybody to see yeah i i i, I got that and i did that okay. i think it's a lot better okay yeah all right so let's go to the next slide so um Let's look at the water division. Um, so as I mentioned before, one of the things that we wanna do is, it, first off, we wanna create the assistant public works director slash city engineer. That's an internal um, re, uh, classification. It's not a new position, it's an internal reclassification. Um, and we'd like to change that wa uh, reporting structure for the water supervisor to report to that assistant director we have the lead as, as I mentioned before. Um, we wanna reclassify an existing position to um, water quality specialist. Um, that's not, an, it's not adding staff, it is aligning the position and um, compensation with the work that's actually being done. And we would be keeping that water specialist position that is authorized and budgeted we will not be asking to fill that in 21-22. We will maintain that as a vacancy. So two basically internal reclassifications regarding water um, and uh, the assistant public works director slash city engineer. Um, next slide. Uh, this is for streets. Again, the reclassification of an, an internal reclassification to assistant director. Um, streets would then report to that assistant director. We are asking to fill one of the vacancies or we will be asking in the budget for 21-22 to fill one of the vacancies which would bring us back to the staffing level that we had in 2010. Um, so we've carried two vacancies in streets for 10 years. With the TDD we believe we're going to need to have that one of those vacancies filled. So council member Mack, that is um, an addition to our existing, that would be an addition to our existing staff and streets. Um, any questions on this one? And again, this is, this is what our thoughts are as we're working towards um, budget preparation, which you'll, you will be involved in later this summer and fall. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, this one's a little bit harder. This is the what we're proposing in engineering. So we have the assistant public works director uh, and we're proposing um, an internal uh, promotional opportunity for an assistant city engineer. That's not necessarily adding staff. It's just um, creating a position and restructuring, reclassifying. Okay, so the, the um, project manager box in blue, that is the position that is currently vacant. That's where we have taken the salary and benefit monies and put them into professional services to pay for John Semerau's outside development review. So it's not um, adding money to the budget. 
It's just filling a vacancy and no longer contracting out, if that makes sense, when we go through our vetting process. Um, and then in the lower left, we have a proposed GIS uh, um, permitting technician position, and that would be a new position. Um, whether we fill that with an internal candidate, we would still then have to backfill the vacancy left by the internal candidate um, moving to that new position. So that's two new um, bodies within public works so far. Uh, Jim, did you want to add anything? Yeah, so, um, uh, you, you know, as we, one of the goals in the city um, when I was first hired and it continues to be a goal is to, is to you know, to get our GIS system actually up and running and developed. We have good GIS data. We just don't have it in a, in a classic GIS format. Uh, and Craig, my engineering technician, has prepared all that information. We have contracted with Association of Washington Cities to provide us 100 hours of professional services to take that data and, and get it in the, the new recently purchased uh, GIS software. Uh, and so, um, uh, but that's running a GIS system and the permitting uh, is a full-time job. Uh, Craig is, is, is pulled in, in uh, providing data for, for permits, uh, uh, data for uh, um, the, the franchises uh, when, they're, when they're seeking permits, um, uh, you know, what little in-house design we can do. He's also our archival retrieval uh, person. Uh, and we, it's hard for him to get focused and, and stay focused on one aspect of his job at a time. Um, and so that's why we're looking to, to, to uh, open that position up to propose GIS permit technician, whether it's Craig or not, I don't know. But then um, uh, we would uh, either fill that position or if Craig would uh, uh, qualify, we would have an open engineering technician, which would then solely be focused on providing engineering services to the engineers on staff to keep the, keep our internal projects moving forward um, in, a, in a more timely and cost effective manner as well. So, Okay, and so one other thing about this org chart, you notice the gray box in the middle. We currently have a vacant civil engineer position. It's authorized and unbudgeted, and we would not be asking to fill that in 21 or 22. So just some internal uh, reclassifications and um, that new GIS uh, permitting tech or backfilling um, if there, uh, the engineering tech if, if there's um, a transfer. In, uh, with an internal candidate. Next slide. So this is what, uh, and, and I, I apologize, it's a little bit hard to read, but this is what engineering would look like. And um, so we would have, we would still maintain a street, one vacant street specialist position um, and one uh, un, uh, authorized but unbudgeted water position and that civil engineer uh, authorized but unbudgeted uh, adding two new bodies um, one street specialist and then the GIS permitting tech so we have a, we have a question um, that makes sense we have a question uh, Kathy from mayor pro tem okay sorry Kathy That's uh, okay. I was at the the AWC conference that was explaining the GIS and how different departments, and I believe the police department is also interested. I guess I had forgotten we had bought the software for that, but I think there's council members who have no idea what that is. So if you could just a tiny bit, just explain what the acronym is for, um, might help put some of the pieces together. I'm going to defer to Jim as, as to what that is and how useful it is. Okay, so GIS, uh, that stands for Geographical Information System. And so basically it's, it's a map of the entire city and all the lots that are platted, that are taxed. Um, they have a, a, a parcel ID number. We all know that when we get our annual property tax bill. Uh, that's your parcel ID number. And each one of those lots, um, there has been a level of work um, 
by city staff done at those lots, whether it's, you know, servicing a water meter, it could be a, uh, a police call, uh, it could be a fire call, an ambulance call, uh, it could be a, 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 you know, a sewer main break, something of that nature. And all that information goes into that GIS system. And so at any time, you know, as we build our records and let's say, you know, um, uh, the house down this, 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 this use city hall, for example, um, they request um, a, a different water meter. When we go out there, we put a new water meter in, that information is tagged back to the GIS, so it's always updated. This information is available to the, in the field, uh, to the field technicians, to the police officers, to the firefighters, to uh, uh, utility billing, uh, to the permit uh, uh, development services. Uh, it, it'll have a, a public graphic interface where they can pull up and they can see things. Uh, they can't manipulate the data, but they can certainly see what's going on. Uh, I've used it uh, extensively in my career. Uh, some of the other cities that, and communities I've worked in and provide engineering services to. Um, when you do your preliminary engineering, it, it, it shows all your water and sewer lines, what sizes they are, you know, what the locations are, um, and that 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 in turn saves money for the developer that's looking to come in, um, you know, because his engineer doesn't have to go out and and necessarily field locate all that to come up with the conceptual design and knows what some of the uh, information is already available to them. Um, and currently in development services, what happens there is we get a pre-application and it says, here's the lot. And now we go in and we, we generate by hand that the lot has an eight inch water main in front of it. And it, you know, instead of them looking at it, we provide that information to them with staff time and, and input versus them being able to access it. So that's what a GIS system is. They can be very powerful. They can very be very plain Jane. Um, but you know, we're looking to get that one that, that fits our community. Uh, I'm an information guy. I always say we're in the information business. When my phone rings, I'm providing information to somebody, whether it's a council member, whether it's a developer, or whether it's somebody that, that has a speeder on their street, right? And that's information that we need. Um, and that's information that, that makes it a lot easier for us to provide to the public. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And I think it would open the eyes to some of the council members about, wow, didn't know that. So thank you. Okay, uh, next slide. All right, so we're going to be proposing some pretty significant changes during the budget process. And I just wanted to share with you some of our ideas on how we might fund those changes. Um, remember, there's, there's gonna be about $32,000 in savings in streets and water. Um, from the retirement of the operations manager. Uh, that's the annual savings. Facilities, um, there's a savings there too, but that's a little bit different because that is what we call an internal service fund and it gets, uh, that all gets charged out to whoever is using those services. But a portion of the streets and um, water savings from the operations manager's retirement could go to pay for the uh, reclassification for the assistant director, public works, city engineer, the water quality specialist, and um, the savings in the streets division, about 32,000 or you know, less if we take some of it to apply to the um, assistant director position, could go to uh, fund a portion of the cost of, of filling that street specialist position and then we would need to look at the revenue in the streets division to see if we're able to fund um, the balance. Uh, we want, we anticipate or are hoping to do more design in house. Um, and so we would have uh, reduced consultant costs by performing that design in house and um, the development review in house. And uh, remember we would we would fill that vacant authorized project manager position. We already are using that salary and benefits money to pay for contact, contract development review. We would just bring it back up to um, the salary and benefits lines rather than professional services uh, and, and hire that the development review engineer in-house. Um, we're gonna leave vacant that unbudgeted civil engineering position and, um, and uh, the reduced consultant costs could help pay for that proposed GIS permitting tech position, the new one. So to, to kind of summarize, we're looking at, again, one new streets position, one new body in streets, 
Uh, we have the position authorized, we just have it vacant. And then one new body in engineering that is not um, currently funded. We would be filling a vacancy and eliminating the contract development review engineer. Does that make sense? And did I answer council member Matt's questions? Uh, yes, Kathy, thank you. Um, I guess we will we'll see how all this pans out when we get to the budgeting process and see what we're, uh, funds we're able to work with. But, um, you know, I'm all for streamlining and making things more efficient. Thank you for your explanation. Uh, do we have any other slides after this besides the question one, Jim? Nope. Questions? Okay, uh, Councillor Servadius. Thank you, Ms. Rosen, for the update. I guess um, I'll kind of wait and see as well. Uh, one of the things I heard, well, I'll start with this. Anytime we make a change or we consider making a change, I would ask myself three questions. Does it save us money or how much is this going to cost? Hopefully it saves us money. Secondly, does it create efficiencies? And efficiencies are a way to create cost savings if we can become more effective. And then finally, what does it do for overall um, uh, just workability, staff morale? You know, how does it how does it make the team work better together? Uh, I think it was Mr. Kamak said something I know you may have referenced, or there were several references to permitting software, and I'm I'm guessing that's Bluebeam. And there's probably a learning curve with that. Hopefully that is it was implied that that might not be going as smoothly as possible, and maybe I didn't hear that correctly. So hopefully that is a, something that we're implementing that will improve this process across the board, going from paper to all electronic. Uh, but as we go through this budget process, I'll be asking myself those three questions when we consider this is, you know, what does it cost? How does it create efficiencies? And what does it do for the overall workability of the team and staffing. So I appreciate the thorough or fairly thorough update so that we got a good look at what you're considering. Thank you. Is CAC with us? CAC, did you want to respond? Yes, yes yeah. I did. <laughs> I couldn't get to the, uh, yeah. to the uh, mute, uh, unmute fast enough. Hi, um, yes, software, so Bluebeam, uh, Bluebeam is uh, one of the softwares uh, that we use to review drawings, but it is definitely not necessarily a document management software. So even though it is providing, um, it's, it's one of the tools that we use in our development review, but it, and it's very powerful, uh, we're yet to use uh, it and, and, and its power. We're still developing a workflow uh, to uh, to use that tool, but Bluebeam requires a, a backbone, a backbone to make it efficient, and and that's the you know like a, a tracking software um, and things like that, and we don't have that currently, um, and those are the things that we need to kind of look at um, uh, moving forward in order to make things uh, more efficient, and so. Uh, currently, we do have Bluebeam, and we're working with engineering and John Semrau to try and uh, make that workflow uh, happen because we're all telecommuting, uh, so we're getting infrastructure, so we're adapting. Uh, we're not there yet, uh, but we are making changes. However, Bluebeam is only one small component of the entire development review process. There's many more components uh, that we can look at uh, for efficiency uh, that other cities are doing that we currently don't have. But again, it's resources, budget, and all that kind of training, et cetera. Thank you. Okay, anyone else with questions? Okay, comprehensive report, and thank you very much for that. Um, so at this time, we will move on to item number A under administration. COVID-19 economic recovery response effort. And I assume that uh, it's our city administrator, Blaine Oborn. Yes, and I think uh, Lisa's gonna bring up the slides for us. And just for full disclosure, I gave you my draft slides, but this is a very quickly evolving process and rules are coming out and, and uh, 
program's being updated, so I've added a few more slides as I've learned new information, and certainly as we go through this, some of the things will be adapted. So I think uh, I'll pause here until we can bring up the presentation. All right, we got the first slide. Let's go to the next slide. All right, funding. The uh, it uh, looks like the legislature has passed it on, so Department of Commerce just issued a notice that I think in two days from now we'll get the contract proposal here. Uh, we can enter in with a contract with the De State Department of Commerce, which will funnel down from the federal government with the CARES funding. Uh, we anticipated receiving $689,100. Uh, so the city areas we can focus on are the four areas there of COVID-related expenses. Uh, this is an expenditure reimbursement um, process. You cannot use it for city, city revenue shortfalls. So that's where we really have the need is, is, uh, is short revenue shortfalls, but this CARES funding uh, cannot be applied for that. But we can do it for unbudgeted expenditures uh, related to the COVID, and we have a number of, of things that we can do in the medical, public health, public safety, and just facility compliance uh, with new software, new adaptation. Uh, so there's a lot of areas where it allows us to do it. We've done some preliminary um, analysis on it. We really think that in our preliminary analysis that if we allocate 50% for those four areas of city expenses, then we'll have additional money. The rest of the money can probably be spent on economic support, uh, which is grants to small business to re, uh, reimburse costs incurred during uh, the, closure, the closure of for, due to uh, COVID-19 restrictions and other retooling efforts. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide here. Just the uh, timeline uh, here. Um, the federal timeline went all the way out to uh, December 31st, 2020, but we just got noticed from the Department of Commerce that they're doing a, a uh, tighter uh, timeline and only allowing the expenditures to go out to October 31st, 2020, and then, of course, starting on March 1st, 2020. So these are the eligible expenditures, unbudgeted items, and, and such, and so, and then we have to do the full reimbursement by the November 15th to them, so we'll work on complying with this process when we enter in with agreement with the uh, with the um, Department of Commerce. And then this is a new slide. So we'll go on to the next slide here. Um, I did get a commitment, it looks like, from the county. Uh, we'll be sharing, we're doing this as a North Whidbey um, Island program uh, in the 98277. And so hopefully we'll combination of city funding, uh, the funding I talked about, which is half of what we're getting, and then initial um, contribution from the county of $333,000 and hopefully um, we'll have new money. I think they're in, they're over $4 million is their allocation. Uh, they have a lot of it they'll have to go for public health and for human services and public health, certainly all that testing going on, they'll probably use utilize um, CARES funding for that and so they'll have other expenditures but hopefully they'll set aside some um, for um, business relief and other programs. Moving on here, a new slide here too as we updated and start thinking this relatively quick project here. Um, already had conversations with the chamber uh, um, and we see them as, as a major administrative component here, um, doing all the advertising of the program, uh, reviewing the applications and then rec making recommendations to the city. Some preliminary numbers there is $50,000 and then we set aside some costs uh, related to the program that we feel that we can probably get reimbursed for of $17,050 just to round it down. That does a nice round down to $600,000 remaining for applicants and, and for uh, business relief. So going down here to uh, contracts, I just mentioned uh, the Department of Commerce uh, contract. Hopefully uh, 
we'll get that really quickly and on the council agenda for June 2nd. Um, and then also hopefully we'll really quickly, we're working with the chamber for a professional service agreement for them administrating the, the, the uh, program. And then uh, we envision ultimately they'll make recommendations and then we'll enter into agreement kind of like we do with LTAC funding um, with the uh, award winners, the businesses that we're awarding for and then they'll submit reimbursements from us and then we'll pay them and then we'll submit reimbursements to the state to get reimbursed for, for the outgoing grants. So, and if I hear any, I'll stop if uh, I get any notice of any hands going up here So as we go along here. So now we're going in. We do, we do okay, uh, one go ahead. from Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor Pro Tem, go ahead. Um, so you're basically wanting to draw up a contract with the chamber. Um, Let's go to back to one slide. Go please. ahead, Beth. Yes. Um, to manage and look through the applications out of that 50,000, then it wouldn't all go to small businesses. They would have in the contract, we would agree on a fee for them for their time for doing this that would be figured out. Yeah, the 50,000, we're going to do the awards. The awards are going to be up if we tie in the city and the uh, county money, it's $600,000 we're awarding. What we're estimating, and let's go back the one slide again there. Uh, what you're talking about, that's the administration cost that we're uh, administer uh, that them administering the program. That's the advertising, recruiting. I'll kind of get into the services when a little bit more detail as I go through this si slide, and I think you'll you'll get a better idea uh, of the services that they do. Um, but we've had some preliminary. We've asked them to um, give us kind of an estimate, and so fifty dollar fifty thousand is kind of a ballpark number. Um, that they've kind of come up with because um, they, they don't have the resources to run this for free and I, I think it makes sense to to allocate. This was not an, a, a budget expenditure. We didn't plan on doing this program. Um, so and that meets one of the requirements in, in uh, paying this, this type of money out. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for now. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I think I'll get into it a little bit more. So let's go ahead and go forward to um, small business and then go to the next slide here. Um, so yeah, this is a partnership with Island County, uh, City of Oak Harbor, Greater Oak Harbor Chamber of Commerce and the Oak Harbor Main Street. So we're all partnershiping for this, to do this assist businesses impacted by COVID-19. Um, so by with using the county money, we're making this a, uh, a North Whidbey program and reaching out to an, uh, a greater area there. Um, it's a win-win because we, we partner with the county's funding and our funding put it together. So um, we have a lot larger funding due to our population than a lot of the other two municipalities. So uh, it's a real benefit to the businesses, but we have a lot more businesses and, and we probably have roughly half the population of the county is gonna be in our business area that's impacted by this and, and it's gonna be receiving uh, assistance. So we have a lot of impacted businesses because of our, our uh, area and our population. So, um, so the real goal here is to, to uh, assist those businesses impacted by COVID-19. So any questions on this slide? I guess I should slow down a little bit here. All right, moving on. Um, this is kind of, ex okay, go ahead, and Council Member Mack. Thank you, Blaine. Um, assistance for small businesses. So Blaine, uh, question, how are you doing the math on that? How many small businesses are you anticipating or are out there in the North End in addition to what dollars you're working with? So how does that math pan out to for um, uh, uh, assisting these small businesses that are impacted? You raised what a kind of <laughs> yeah, you raised a good question. We kind of talked about it in, in our discussion with the chamber. They figured about 3,500 businesses. Um, so with in dividing the minimum amount and the money we have, we think we can we can do about 10% of those businesses. 
Um, so we're really going into an uncharted territory. Um, so we're, we're kind of learning as we go in along and doing our best um, to, to help as many businesses. There are other programs out there that businesses have. I think when we look about this, we're going to try to catch some of the businesses that didn't qualify for um, the Paycheck Protection Program and then the other, the, the governor has a couple of programs out there too. Um, so um, we're trying to, and I'm hoping we're, we're a little bit more flexible than some of those other programs. And so we can come in a, a kind of a third strike with those, with those two other aid, aid packages and we can come in with our local more uh, tailored one and be a little bit more flexible and, and impact some of those businesses that, that have that. So as far as the need, you're kind of talking about that, that's really hard for us to judge. I think we're, we're trying to, I hope that we get more money um, from the uh, county uh, to go along with it. I think we're probably, I'm probably um, recommending the, the maximum I think that we can probably contribute out of our, our money, but certainly uh, I think we want to lobby the, the, the county. And as we go through this, I think I'll talk about that in, in processes. But um, yeah, it's, there's a lot of unknowns here. So you're raising a good question here. And I think we're doing our best to, to, to help as much as we can. Okay, here's a suggestion and recommendation yeah, uh, from a council member in addition to um, a commercial property owner. The county does need to consider some type of uh, uh, a small uh, tax credit for those days that those businesses aren't open. So it all falls back to uh, who's the tenant, who's the property owner, but that is something that would be fair, whatever percentage that is, it could be anywhere from 1% on up to 100% of all those days closed uh, on that piece of commercial property. So when, when things are moving forward, that would be a good uh, approach to the county. Uh, thank you, Blaine. Yeah, thank you. And the trick we have, and, and we'll continue to develop it, and certainly uh, I think uh, our PIO is listening to that, and we're still working on criteria as we go along here. Because uh, we want to, it's that balance between trying to be as flexible to help as much as possible, but yet having some criteria that people can kind of uh, see. So I think we're, we're trying to do that. So I appreciate that input. Okay, so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, going on to um, supporting businesses here, let's go back to that slide right there. Um, this kind of answers what you were talking about, uh, Council uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Months, what Chamber's going to help us with, reviewing um, business plans, talking about uh, st strategies to overcome. They're going to be, there's a lot more to this than just reviewing the applications. There's a lot of support that they have. Um, and then if you go on the next timeline, it kind of talks about this. Um, and, and they're going to work with the uh, Economic uh, Development Council. Um, of Island County and a number of businesses to do some outreach, provide opportunities for business owners to meet with bankers, with business leaders and, and members. So, and then the next area there is, is uh, put applications online, promote through social media. And then here's kind of the, the, the aid industry component in here is virtual meetings, talk about uh, grant application process and just general help, doing outreach and and uh, so we've talked. We talked a lot of uh, doing uh, experience. Talk about other businesses that are impacted. Um, have some people. Um, so uh, the chambers did some good job of looking at other ways that they can help, and and having experts who talk and utilize, uh, like we're doing now, um, virtual meetings and to to do some outreach. So there's going to be a lot of those components that are kind of part of this whole application process even directing people to other programs that might be available to them, um, just a lot of re outreach. Um, there's a lot of people who aren't actually members of the chamber that they, we, we, we want to obligate them to, to reach out to. Um, those are probably the ones that haven't been up, keeping up on a lot of the available um, programs out there. So there's just a lot of information pouring out and it's just challenging um, for businesses to to absorb this when they're dealing with the closure so i think i have a question for mayor pro tem Munz, go ahead uh thank you um 
there's 11 days till June 1st. This, I mean, this is a very speedy timeline and it doesn't seem like things have been decided. I know just meeting with Congressman Larson at the Help House on um, yesterday, um, he was talking about the HEROES and the CARES Acts and stuff, and he says, if it isn't validated and checks in the boxes, we are going to come after whoever and find them. Um, so we have to be very, very careful. So I'm a little perplexed that we only have 11 days by your timeline to get to June, and you're always talking, you know, host a virtual meeting to talk about grant applications, and then you've got three more weeks to application and then review. So more power to you, but it just, um, be sure everyone understands the rules and it is all documented. Uh, he, he didn't say that for just <laughs> throwing it out there. So yeah. something happened somewhere back in DC and it's gonna be a fine tooth comb. So I, I just, just be careful in making promises and be sure everything is documented, please. And yeah. and finance department is is up on this. I, I know we want to make people feel good, but uh, we also don't want the the city to um, lose anything or be processed because of this either. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. In the name of full disclosure, there's there's always going to be a possibility that something doesn't qualify and we would have to use city funds on it. I think um, we're running this, but I think we're gonna do our best to get the experts on this, get the opinion on it. Um, the The initial things about what doing the program and what you can do are pretty narrow to begin with, um, but there's a lot of information. We're not the only ones doing this. So I think uh, as we go through this, uh, this is, you're right, this is an optimistic, this will probably push back some um, but I think the balance we have is trying to, the sooner we can get it out, the sooner we can help businesses. So I'm trying to balance that with, with making sure we, we uh, fulfill all the requirements and we turn around and, and keep and, and get updated. So things are modify as we go along and that's one of my disclosures here. Uh, times will change, uh, we'll modify some. So just a lot of learning curve and a lot of new information and I had to modify this, uh, this process today, finding out that Department of Commerce had a, a uh, much shorter time period for the reimbursement than what was in the federal requirements. So a lot of balance there. I'm hoping as the application comes out in two days uh, to the mayor from Department of Commerce, there'll be more information on there, but you're right, it, it'll be adapted. Um, and uh, But I think th it allows us to do the program. We just have to make sure we, we uh, know what areas are allowed so that we can get our reimbursement from Department of Commerce. So, okay, go ahead and go on to application process. Uh, go ahead, uh, Council Member Mack. Thank you, uh, Blaine. Um, I understand going through the whole process here. I'm looking at all of this uh, on my uh, other tablet here about uh, everything. So, and all the application process and uh, um, and where all the funding is coming from. And as Mayor Pro Tem put it, uh, we want to cross our I's and dot the T's. <laughs> You're talking to someone that the f our family has been in business for over 70 years. Now, who's in charge and who's going to be in charge of the most common basic thing for getting these businesses up and running, which is inviting the customers to come out and spend their money. That is, one item is going to do more than any federal, state, and county, and city funding. So as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, there needs to be more. I don't see anything, but there needs to be a more robust plan on getting our local citizens to shop local. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, um, Mr. Ober. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, I mean, council has to be very involved because we approve the funds. The funds, I mean, we have, we approve the paycheck. We get advice on how it should be and where it should go and things like that. But so council has to be 
on your team all, all the way because we're the ones that approve it. It isn't just a staff member that does this. So I, I want to be sure everybody understands the process. That's just just a, just my opinion. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on, just we'll have an application process. I kind of talked about the uh, expert advice there and then fair evaluation is pretty critical here. So we envision a committee be informed um, and then making a recommendation to me and the mayor uh, for approval for the individual grants that'll be around up to $15,000, but certainly we can modify this as we go along. Um, and then I talked about the funding already a little bit, the initial funding and then possible uh, request for, for city contribution in, in this, uh, pro in this uh, program. Next area is targeting uh, small businesses, uh, still working on that. Some of them are doing 10 employees, some of them are doing 15, 20, so we're trying to, to get that right uh, area there, so that might be subject to change there. Um, and then certainly um, has to be in North Whidbey because there'll be other county programs probably uh, for other applicants in other parts of the county here. And then we talked about the priority uh, for businesses affected by COVID-19. Um, and then just to answer um, Council Member Mack's question here about the advertising, uh, I talked about that somewhat in my report there, but uh, our PAO, we are working with the chamber on programs on that area too. So uh, in, in uh, increasing the visibility, so certainly that is a good component and something that's been discussed as being very helpful. Uh, okay, going back to the program here, next slide here is just the eligibility as the how. All right, we'll go ahead and stop for uh, Council Member Mack. Thank you, Blaine. So, Blaine, just when is this going to be uh, launched to the public? As um, Mayor Pro Tem put it, uh, next phase of this is the end of the month here, where a good amount of more businesses will be opened, opened up. Hopefully, I'll be able to open up. Is there something that the city is doing with the chamber that that can be launched that first week in June? I'm looking for a yes or a no type of thing. That is our target. That's back to the ambitious time frame that I had. So yes, we are we are, are hoping to uh, launch it in early early June. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. All right. Going on here. Um, eligibility is just the how. A lot of detail there. Um, and then we do have a, probably some exclusion there of certain people that are involved in the program. Uh, we'll refine that uh, area there. Uh, the next slide here is just uh, things we need to know in the application process, uh, just the common sense things uh, here. Um, the next pro is the why they need the money here, the impacts, um, just kind of the key areas, how they are affected and the dates and where they were affected. And, and uh, we'll refine this as part of the application process. Uh, the next one here is just uh, a little bit more detail. And then the next one here is the proposal. Um, what will they do with the money here? Uh, this is the one we're kind of refining here. Um, making sure that uh, whatever expenditures are reimbursable for the state program and through the federal government. So uh, we'll continue to, to uh, refine what areas of eligible cost. They can't use it for revenue shortfall, just like we can't use it for revenue shortfall, but uh, they can use it for eligible cost. And then just to answer a little bit more questions here and give you more detail than I gave you, I added this new slide here. Uh, this is back to where I was talking about where the chamber envisioned them taking the application, doing the review, providing recommendations to the mayor and city administrator, and then we would actually handle the awards. Um, and then once we do the awards, we would handle the grant reimbursement from the state. Any questions there? I, I, I think I have a question. Yeah. Um, uh, do we intend to have a, a team uh, that, that makes the... the the recommendation uh, yeah. once once we get them and so we would encourage somebody or a yeah. couple of counselors 
yeah, that might be interested. Yeah, we can do that. I wouldn't want to exclude any counselors that yeah. might, be, might be eligible that, you know. Yeah, we're maybe, looking maybe for. Maybe they're excluded. I, I didn't yeah. need that part of this. The, the way I kind of visual is kind of like with a mortgage kind of thing. You, you have some people through the chamber that would be reviewing the applications and kind of expert, and then they would make the recommendations to a committee um, and then that, com that award committee would make the recommendations to the mayor and I, and then we would go ahead and approve um, the agreements that would be under, th under each of those agreements would be under 30,000 because I think the max we're talking about is, is 15,000. So, um, but certainly uh, I think we're, I'll work with the uh, chamber, with the uh, county and with the mayor and council on on developing that grant award um, group or committee that would make the recommendations um, to to make the awards. And we talked about a slide here. We want to make sure it's a real fair process and that meets the requirements of the of, the, of this CARES funding. All right, moving on here. Um, a little bit more on the grant reimbursement project with the this is the part where the city would be doing uh, receiving and signing uh, contracts submit and then the applicant would submit the funding the documentation to us and the request for payment and then we, we would provide them the check and then we want some follow-up here uh, with them reporting um, back to the committee and so we can see some follow-up here and how the money is used I think that's a good a good process to handle and then lastly, I made it to the last slide here. So what I'm looking for tonight is council input to pr proceed with the uh, North Whidbey Island Small Business Relief Fund and then input on um, city CARES funding, the amount, whether I, I pick too high. Uh, I don't think we'd go any higher than that, but we could go back and we can also do this in kind of uh, phases where uh, we kind of have initial funding, we, we turn around and go through a grant process and, and we allocate that funding. We may have money left over, we go back again with a, a new grant process or we get additional funds in and then we come back again. So it can go into in cycles here. Um, coming forward here on the council, uh, I envision um, coming forward with uh, the Washington State Department of Commerce contract um, that hopefully we'll receive in two days from their, their latest email. Uh, and then hopefully we can get that on the June 2nd contract. I envision having a, a professional service agreement with Greater uh, Chamber um, so that we can get this going in, in early uh, June. Um, and then um, the termination approval from the council to allocate some of that CARES funding to this uh, small business relief program. So I'll take any questions. Councilor Servadius. Thank you, a couple things. I'll first put on a council member hat and you asked a question, Mr. O'Born is, is half enough. Um, heck, I'd like to see us get it all distributed. The question would be, you know, what what costs have we incurred? You know, there's probably a lot of extra PPE that both fire and police have utilized. So let's make sure and take care of those costs. Um, and then, yeah, let's get as much of this out in the community as possible. From a chamber hat, um, very excited about this. It's gonna be something that's good, not just for members, but non-members as we work through the details. I know we've got an executive um, committee meeting or executive board meeting uh, scheduled this Friday afternoon to try and fast track through some of these details. So um, it's happening very quickly. And so that's a, a good thing. And I'm just uh, you know grateful that this money is trickling down and hopefully we get it into the correct hands as quickly as possible with a fair uh, process. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, any other council? Okay. Um, I'm sure you might have other questions, you know, but give us a call, send us an email. Thanks. Um, and then city administrator report, I guess. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and move on. I'll start on uh, 
kind of a new new business here that uh, we, we of course we have the council vacancy uh, with the resignation of uh, council member Larson so we we'll certainly miss him on the council but uh, we'll have to go through the process um, staff is looking at the process last time we had a vacancy uh, certainly the process is up to the to the council um, but we'll go ahead and bring forward a process based upon the last process used for selecting a a um, as for filling a city council vacancy at the June 2nd meeting. So any questions on that? More information to come, but just, okay. All right, um, just going through the report here, uh, some of the key items here um, on the second page here under community events here, um, I think uh, the mayor administrator uh, special events permitting and Chief Merrill we're, we're meeting with the uh, county on a regular basis here um, just looking at uh, information and trying to determine what events and kind of be prepared for uh, the opening of the phases here uh, certainly uh, new information on the uh, possibility of the county being uh, Island County being able to accelerate um, beyond that so certainly new information will come on that and we'll continue to uh, disseminate the information down to council and to department heads as we uh, progress into these uh, newer phases here and certainly they're going to be welcome and uh, sooner we can get businesses open in a safe manner the the uh, sooner we can help with the that's a key in the recovery effort is to be open so uh, so certainly that's exciting that with the new news there with the uh, with the option of the uh, county possibly going at a faster pace and I think the uh, county did write a, a letter um, so we have a question yeah, we have, do um, it, doing that. so go ahead mayor pro tem uh, as far as the county uh, mayor was anything decided is the county going to try to expedite all the plans they have to have in place to send to the governor to open up early yes did they do an indication yeah. today at that meeting today the board of health met um, and they had two of the three uh, required items one was a letter from the county health uh, uh, director we ha already had that we did pass a, res uh, a, a motion to send as long as we got uh, a letter from the hospital uh, and and I expect that that got done before the end of the day I expect that the um, email was sent today uh, and uh, if we do get approval uh, that will mean that we'll be able to go to phase two as soon as they give that approval which could be we're thinking Friday possibly um, and and the, it would be all of phase two with the exception of camping there there were a couple of commissioners and we had a split vote there and, and decided to accept camping uh, uh, and we expect that the governor is going to open that on the 2nd of June anyway uh, you know in a, in a uh, restricted manner so um, long story uh, long answer but yes I would expect that the governor will I entertain our, our motion uh, in we think two days so, you know, that'll be before June 2nd, <laughs> if it happens, hopefully. Uh, Councilor Mack. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not quite sure who this question is uh, uh, referred to here, but um, uh, since it's in Blaine, so I'll address Blaine here on this. Um, Canceling of the fireworks display. Uh, more than 50 people is still prohibited. Now, there's a good amount of people in Oak Harbor that can see those fireworks from their deck or from uh, and still be social distancing. Is there any way that was it talked about that Windjammer Park could be closed off so no one can gather but still go on with the display on a barge? I mean evidently that's all been gone through and that's been decided and it's, uh, it's a final situation. Is I, that what I'm hearing I or think, seeing? I think I can answer that. Well, uh, we did meet with uh, uh, Mr. Higman, our uh, Board of Health uh, um, um, specialist, and, and uh, it w had a long discussion about the fireworks. We initially had given approval to the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. to do those if they, if they could police the distancing requirements. 
after a discussion with them about that, um, the only way for the city to try to do that would be to fence the entire park like we pretty much did during the, uh, uh, during the construction process. Expensive fencing, uh, somebody would have had to pay for that to try to keep the people out of there. And, and I think the conversation uh, ended in the fact that that was not uh, affordable. And so uh, it was not, the final decision was it was not, uh, not a wise uh, thing to try to do. Okay, just not cost effective. So that makes sense, uh, Mayor Severin. So thank you for the clarification there, sir. Did I miss something, Councilor Servadius? Uh, or did I say something wrong there maybe? No, just, just depending to that, those conversations occurred even as late as uh, this morning, there were conversations going amongst the executive board. Is there a way to pull it off? Um, it was a very difficult decision. You know, a lot of due diligence was done uh, with the chamber board because as you know, it's the chamber that puts that, that on with privately raised funds. And uh, well, with the exception of the grant from the city that's happened in the last uh, year or so, the LTAC grant, that provides the barge, but that's a chamber activity more so than the city. So the board as a whole went through that process and it was a very difficult decision. Uh, I mean, that's obviously a time honored tradition, but in respect to the, the governor's mandate and trying to be as uh, cautious as possible, um, that was the decision that was made. So that was more of a chamber thing than a city thing. Thank you. Thank you, counselor. And, and I, I know that we did explore that potential barge idea, and there was not one available. That was that was another part of it, that decision. So, all right, moving on here. Just uh, I reiterated again here, uh, coordinating with the chamber and with the Main Street Association uh, in efforts to help small businesses. I think we've got some campaigns going on uh, with Holland Happenings and some other issues. And certainly as you talked about, uh, Council Member Mack here, we'll look at other ways that we can partner uh, with these th other two identities and, and see how we can help with advertising and, and marketing as we do these openings here. And just helping with the logistics too. There's just a lot to it. So certainly a lot of uh, outreach efforts are, are happening in that area. So moving on to um, development services here, just want to focus on continuing canceling the uh, May uh, plan commission meeting here due to the governor's order. Uh, on to uh, finance here, um, staff is monitoring spending um, and making sure we allocate costs towards the, uh, the possible uh, or the CARES funding issue as much as possible. So I think preliminary, we think that the half uh, saving half of it would be probably adequate, but we'll we'll continue to monitor there. And then just as as the uh, other end of the issue here with our financials, uh, I think staff is looking at uh, limiting funding to things that are necessary and trying to get as much savings as we can in that area. And then um, the finance director is working on revenue uh, projections. So uh, hopefully uh, she'll we'll have some numbers uh, start coming out here. We'll start having some some revenue projections uh, with, with that on our June 17th workshop is what she's targeting uh, for giving the council an update on. So moving on here to uh, human services here, certainly we welcome um, our city clerk, uh, Julie Lindsay. So we have the opportunity of having two city clerks. It's only at one meeting that we ever had that, but we do have city clerks, two city clerks. They're, they're working very good together tonight. And so certainly we wish uh, Carla Brown, uh, goodbye, and, and thank her for her meeting. And I'm, I'm going to start crying here a little bit. So <laughs> just thank her for just uh, really been a, 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 a great help to me. And so she was one of the early faces I met when I came to the city. So it'll be hard to see her leave. So we just thank her for her dedication and service to the city. So uh, this being her last meeting, almost done here, and I'm keeping it going on by talking. So I'll just move on here. So um, just certainly the, the Navy um, connecting to the clean water uh, facility proposal. Um, so ha continue to have meetings. The update here is that uh, uh, we're still in pre-negotiation, but we were notified that they have the ability to go into um, into negotiations. It's going to take them about a month to do so. They'll provide information on when they can do that, but we do have meetings scheduled on May 28th 
and June 11th, and then we kind of targeted weekly after that uh, on Thursday morning. So continue with that format there so we can um, keep that on that effort. And certainly I welcome uh, council members coming on and, and then uh, our citizen participant, uh, Larry Munns, has been a big help here and, and our consultants here. Just a lot of group effort here and appreciate everybody's input and in helping with that. And with that, I'll take any questions. Okay, seeing no questions, any uh, other city council business? Councilor Servadius. Thank you. Just, I see on our department head meeting update that we're going to hopefully get a look at the smoking in the parks at our June workshop. Is that still a realistic timeline? Yeah, the challenge we have with that item is it, we can't say that that's necessary and, and essential, so we've been kicking it down. So it's dependent upon when we go off the open meetings restrictions. So we, we keep on pushing that forward. If we want to say it's a critical item, we could bring it forward. Um, are you viewing it as something we, we really need to, to deal with? I mean, that, that can help us in that justification of... of well in case we continue with the restrictions we have on meetings? I would have to go back and look. I think um, I made the request in December, January, and I know we've had the coronavirus in between here, um, but I'm not sure we only able, I don't know what the definition would be for something that's essential. I guess I would be more of a question. At some point we have to work our way back into normal and as we head into the summer months, uh, that's something that I think would become more frequent, especially as people gather. So while it's not mission critical to city business, uh, the request, like you said, I'd have to go back and look when I made it. Uh, it, was, it actually started with something that one of our little leagues had inquired about, and that was probably tail end of last year, early this year. So I just would like to see some traction made there. You know, I, I certainly don't blame you. We've we had that teed up and ready to go at least two months ago, I think. I think we have the city attorney. And, and then we've, oh, oh, do we have the city attorney? Yeah, interim city attorney, Anna. Oh, Anna, did you have any? No, there she is. Hello? Hi. Hi, I just got in. <laughs> Sorry about that. Daycare interviews. Okay, we were talking about the, uh, the um, issue that we that we determined at least a couple months ago. I think we were we were teed up and ready to have the discussion about the smoking in the parks, and then we oh. de we determined that it wasn't essential, and I I think we got some input from elsewhere yes, on sir. those, that's, and so that's, that's what what's happened yesterday. for at least the last two months, I believe, and but I think Mr. Servadius is onto something in that we you know with our summer months coming, and and more more uh, uh, traffic. Uh, expect and especially parks opening even more that maybe we should uh, reconsider that. I, I'd be happy yes, to try to do that. So, okay, we'll do that then. Staff, uh, we'll uh, uh, look at that again and see if we can't move that forward. Thank you. You bet. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I'm concerned too that the cameras have sort of been put on the side and. As the weather gets warmer, we're going to have, I believe, more transients show up. And uh, we've got some nice equipment. And, um, you know, we've had trouble in the dugouts before the Little League and not as much. I mean, everything seems to be going. But as the weather gets warmer, more people show up. And I, I would like to see us, if we can, to keep pushing the cameras for safety um, through the system, too. That why aren't they considered essential now? Okay, we will. The chief, um, no, chief Dresker, did you? Yeah, just uh, to give you a brief update, uh, uh, Council Council uh, Person Munns. So we had a meeting with Public Works and uh, discussed cameras. We had Parks, Public Works, Marina, myself. Uh, we held that meeting. I think it was last week, maybe. Maybe it was at the end of the week before. And then I've got a. Uh, I called up Adrian, who's our one of our IT people. Uh, who is going to meet with me probably next week to talk more in depth about the cameras in the parks down there. And so I've been putting together an Excel spreadsheet that contains information on our cameras, 
we've talked about where we uh, might want cameras around the city. And so what we're going to do um, when I get that compiled is come to you folks and say, uh, here's a package and try to give you the three options from here's a class A system, here's a little bit lesser, and here's the bottom line system. So uh, we've been working behind the scenes on it. It's just a matter of getting those pieces completely together. And then um, depending upon the cost of whatever systems, uh, you know, we'd obviously potentially have to go out to bid if you guys move forward with whatever that cost is. There is some money in a couple of uh, departments uh, that can help offset some cameras for those departments. So uh, we are going to be ready to present that to you. Speaking to the smoking thing, that's ready to go. As soon as we're determined we can do that in a council, uh, I'm ready to uh, bring that forward. We were before uh, the security camera one. We still have pieces we're working on to put together. We can certainly, I can certainly at any time it's appropriate, um, let you know what we have other than just a summary today for information. Okay. That, okay, that answers that. Anyone else? Other council business questions? Well, thank you all for uh, your input and your time and attendance. We appreciate it. Um, and thank you for all your hard work. Thank you to staff also. I know you've been working, lots of you have been working a lot differently with these meetings that we're having, and, and uh, thank you. We appreciate it. So we'll, with that, we're adjourned. <laughs>